Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is a very unusual ancient tree from New Zealand. And this tree will most likely help us answer the question of unusual effects of magnetosphere that we've been detecting recently and most importantly help us understand what happens to life on Earth when the magnetosphere is not as powerful anymore. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And actually, to start, I need to first explain to you what's really happening with the magnetosphere of our planet. It's been acting a little bit strange in the last few years, and specifically in the last uh, decade or so. It actually is not as powerful as it used to be, and the North Pole has been moving really, really fast, changing its position quite dramatically. Since we started measuring it in 1831, it's moved uh, approximately 2300 kilometers, but in the last 12 years or so, um, it accelerated its motion, moving up to 55 kilometers per year. And this is really, really fast and very unexplainable. And this phenomenon even has a name now, Wandering Magnetic North. We can't really explain it, but it sort of suggests to us that something is happening to the magnetosphere of our planet, and some scientists even suggested that maybe it's about to flip like it did many, many years ago. Specifically, about 780,000 years ago, the south was the north and north was the south. There was actually a flip. And today we believe that these magnetic flips happen every 2,000 to maybe 300,000 years. So we're sort of overdue for this magnetic flip. But at the same time, the scientists uh, that studied this in a lot of detail realized that something else might be happening here that is not a magnetic flip, something known as the magnetic excursion. So this is a kind of a event that actually did occur many times. And during these excursions, instead of the actual flip of north and south, the field kind of starts wobbling a lot, uh, becomes very chaotic, and for about anywhere from a few hundred to a thousand years, acts very strange. And then come back to what it used to be with north pointing at the north, south pointing at the south. Now before I continue though, I have to mention that we don't really understand either reversals or excursions very well yet. We don't really understand the mechanisms behind them, we don't really know what exactly causes them, neither do we understand, um, well, the patterns behind them or what could be occurring before or after such reversals. One thing we do know though is that they have happened previously and we know exactly how the magnetic field of our planet has changed, where it was pointing and how much radiation our planet was receiving because we've detected all of these indicators um, in, for example, ice samples that we usually retrieve from Greenland. So here you can normally tell how much of various radioactive material was deposited over time. But a much better measurement of all this would come from a tree and specifically by studying tree rings. And this has been done in the past uh, with some of the ancient trees we have here on Earth. And luckily for us, we can usually tell um, how healthy the tree was, uh, how much radiation was deposited there, and of course, even usually see the signs of magnetic lines um, acting on the tree itself. So in that sense, the discovery coming from New Zealand of this beautiful tree that's roughly around 42,000 years old is definitely exactly what we needed. Now this is a type of a tree known as Agathis australis, also known as Kauri. And these trees um, grow specifically on the northern part of the northern island of New Zealand. In other words, it grows right here. We also know quite a lot about them. More specifically, what we know about them is that they do have really long lives and have very, very unique, very specific rings. And so by carbon dating this tree, we discovered that it lived about 1500 years, roughly around 42,000 years ago. In other words, this was the time of a very major uh, so-called excursion when the magnetic field looked something like this. This is a very, very important find because it will allow us to actually dig into the history of this tree and discover very specifically what happened to, well, life in a sense, back on Earth when this occurred. Now, these so-called geomagnetic ex excursions are actually very common. There are at least 12 of them um, since basically the last major reversal. We obviously have no idea why they happen, but they do happen quite a lot. And the one that this tree lived through is called the La Chambre excursion. And you can kind of see that around 40 to 40, 
5,000 years ago, this is when the tree lived and this is when we had this excursion. I'm posting this in the description below so you can check this out by yourself. But essentially there were a lot of these excursions that happened in the last, um, well, almost million years. And interestingly, La Chambre excursion is the most well studied one because we were able to uh, study it from different parts of the world, suggesting that this was a global event and affected everything. Now there are a few things we discovered uh, by studying this and what we discovered is a little bit unsettling. One of the things is that it lasted for roughly around 450 years and it's very likely that the magnetic field of planet Earth was at a strength of, well, about 5% of its current maximum. In other words, the magnetic field was almost non-existent. It was still there, but not very strong. Now, it might really not affect life as much, because clearly life has survived for a long time and has survived many of these excursions and reversals, so it seems to really not have as much effect. As a matter of fact, it seems that even the humans were around when this happened, so it might really not um, affect us physically, but there is one thing that is of concern to modern society, and that's the fact that unfortunately not the same will be true of satellites. A lot of our technology is dependent on the magnetic field. A lot of our technology survives on having this magnetic field and we need it for anything from GPS to basically functional uh, communication and satellites. But if the magnetic field of our planet suddenly becomes really wonky and becomes unusually um, unpredictable, very weak and is unable to sustain a very strong field like it used to, it is going to create a lot of chaos for um, pretty much the majority of various technologies we use today and our society is going to struggle quite a lot to adapt to this new situation. And a lot of these uh, events seem to be very unpredictable. They sometimes reverse the field completely for a little bit and then reverse it back. Sometimes they change the location of north by about 45 degrees. Sometimes they create many different norths on the planet. So we don't even know what's going to happen and how it will affect us. But it's going to be um, relatively quick and will last for at least a few hundred years. And most of these effects will be very similar to modern effects of geomagnetic storms and uh, will be much, much stronger than before. So it's quite likely that even though life is definitely going to survive and deal with this just fine, the technology that we have today might not. So we might need to start thinking ahead and possibly create something for the future of humanity that is going to be able to survive this unusual and most likely inevitable event that is definitely going to happen, we just don't really know when yet or if it's already started happening now because of the signs we're seeing with the North Magnetic Pole right now and um, the fact that we just can't really explain it. But nevertheless, when the magnetic field gets weaker, the radiation that comes from the sun to us will increase dramatically. And this is why we still need to know what kind of effects it will have on various organic beings that are on our planet, if, including of course ourselves. And all of this information can only be answered by studying actual life that was present during these reversals. And even though we believe that uh, it's not going to affect life, this tree will answer this for sure. It's going to tell us with very, very specific detail what exactly happened to the tree itself when the um, magnetic ex excursion occurred and when the actual poles reversed. And we might even see a lot more detail by studying its rings. And because the complete record of this reversal or this excursion is inside this tree, we'll be able to analyze any kind of major changes that occurred to the tree itself during this process and be able to once and for all answer the question of how dangerous reversals or excursions might be. Now presently we don't have an answer to that, but the samples from this tree are already being analyzed both in New Zealand and Australia, so we'll know soon enough. Until we do find out what happens during these excursions and reversals, we're just going to have to rely on, well, our satellites and of course try to find a way to prevent any kind of an excursion from damaging our technology because if suddenly everything doesn't work anymore we're going to have a lot of chaos and a lot of problems on our hands. Anyway on that note so it's a pretty cool discovery in New Zealand it will definitely help us answer a lot of questions about the magnetic field of our planet and will help us understand what happens in these unusual and very hard to explain conditions. On that note 
Once we discover more, I'll let you know in the next video. But for now, that's it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space sciences and wants to know more about our planet as well. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.